Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another fabulous discussion. Oh my God, is it gorgeous out here? Like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. I love how the, mar the river makes marshmallows, see? Yeah, oh my God, just gorgeous in the winter. Winter's such a badass season, kind of allows the other ones to happen when she feels like it, you know what I mean? She sees the dominator. All right, my name is Kimberly Quinn. It is my pleasure, my totally, just a, oh my God, pleasure to be in here in the woods, in the deep woods, pretty much, sort of, yeah, in the deep woods, hopefully the bears are asleep, to just like talk about being inspired. Oh my God, I'm so feeling it. Talk about being inspired because, see how those mittens are a little flappy things so I can still use my, you know, pointer finger for the button? Very practical. Okay, so inspired literally means in spirit. So before anybody hangs up on me, we are not talking about religion in any kind of way. Feel free to turn into that if you want to. We're talking about um, sort of knowing the connection though, because there's a connection between the creator of all things and creativity. Here's how we're gonna start off though. In order to be inspired, in spirit, creative, and doing your thing and living on your purpose, and you know, you may not know what your purpose is. You know, I hear that sometimes. How do I find my purpose? Well, number one is you gotta have time. You gotta make the time. Because f inspiration cannot be forced or even planned for that matter. You gotta be open to it and listen to, well, Zobar says, listen to the whispers. You've got to be open to it. So there takes, even if you're not for, you're as fortunate as I am to be in these deep woods here, You've got to find silence somehow, some way, some way, wherever you are, because then it flows. And I have a couple of examples, which I just was inspired with actually in the Jeep on the way over here. And one of them was, I was in these exact woods. Oh my gosh. I didn't even plan this. I swear I didn't. Um, I was like right about here, headed right about over there because we're having this big, huge powwow uh, meeting at Champlain about uh, the gap program we, we uh, ran. But anyway, that's not really the point. It was about uh, the class, which before the YouTube channel called Minecraft, is a class. So way back when, that used to be positive psychology, and it's not exactly the same thing because it's amped up, but the whole point is the actual name, Mindcraft, as opposed to Mind with an E-Craft, which is a game, a video game. I was like literally minutes from having to be on this virtual meeting, like minutes. I had to take little Giovanni, I was headed over there where my Jeep is, like hurry, hurry, hurry because I just didn't have it, and I was no joke, inches from where I'm standing, like I, almost in the exact same spot, when all of a sudden it just like came to me. I know you can't make this stuff up. I'm like, Minecraft, like it just came to me. Jumped in the Jeep, sped back home, got on my, thankfully was able to get on the internet because it's super sketchy where we live, and everybody was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm not, I'm not being soapbox modest, or is that right, and they're soapbox braggy, or I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I really, I really don't feel like I can take the credit for it because it just came into my head. I didn't force it, didn't plan it, didn't put any effort into it. So taking credit for it, I, I don't really feel like I can. It just kind of came into my head and it has since, you know, stuck. And this is how I was listening to Wayne Dyer this morning again, and he was talking about the same thing, which is a much bigger level with his first book, which sold gazillions of copies, like millions and millions and translated all different languages and everything he says he doesn't feel like he can take the, the, the credit for that and I said oh my god I get it because on a, a lesser level um, I, I'm comparing to the process not the greatness of his work when I wrote my first book um, it was it was nudging me from the inside out it was like write me write me write me and I had four kids five and under or maybe six and under four kids five and under let's just say at that time and I remember people saying like if if you don't ever wait to write you know, five chapters, like, oh, I'm gonna set Sunday aside. Does not work like that. I mean, you might get lucky and that happens. I'm not believing luck, but you might get, you know, whatever, you might have that happen. Um, but not usually, they say a page at a time and it starts to flow. And I'm telling you, I sat up in my kid's tree fort with a notebook, totally old school, and a pen. And, and it just started, it was like a, it was like a faucet I could not shut off. Gotta make the time, but gotta be a catcher's mitt. And here's the thing, I think it came from Sarah Von Bread, and that guy. I really hope this isn't another rehearsal because I had one this morning when my battery went off. Um, 
she talked about how, because inspiration, in spirit, and she used, call that whatever you want to. For me, it's God. You can say creator of all things, higher power, source with a big S, you know, whatever. She talked about, like, if you're that person who always, has always wanted to write a children's book or a novel, you wanted to build that car from the ground up or you wanted to start a business or whatever, like, whatever like that. She, here's the thing. She said, spirit's just, like, floating along. Like, here you go. You're, you're going to be the next, you know, more current Tommy DePala. Um, or Eric Carl, children's authors, right? Or author, author, your next Stephen King or whatever. I mean, obviously in your own, with your own spin. Um, but here's the thing, if you're too busy and you're just like a gerbil on crack and your schedule is full, just like Sarah Brown Brednick would say, and I think the book is, uh, I know, I don't think I know, it's called Simple Abundance. She would say, spirit's going to go on to the next person who's listening and willing to carry out the task of writing the next best-selling book or the movie script or it doesn't have to be a famous thing. It can be, you know, just building that car, redecorating, you know, a house, starting a business, you know, whatever. Because it's only when we're receptive can we hear, hear is the word, hear the inspiration. Can't force it, can't plan it. does not work that way. It just doesn't. And then, and then also, I get inspired. I'm literally inspired every day, every day. And sometimes I'll go in with an idea in my head to teach. I've always got like a, I always have like a, you know, bullets in a basic plan because it's obviously a curriculum. Though often on the way in, I'll hear something on a podcast or I'll just see something that comes in my head and, and there I come out with a huge story and like there it goes with the inspiration. It's just so true. And then so Wayne Dyer this morning is talking about a story with Mozart who, uh, as most people know, started writing symphonies and he's like eight years old. I think it was eight, eight or nine, not older. And so let's just go with eight. And he said someone asked him once, he said, oh, I want to I want to compose, I want to write, you know, these big compositions and symphonies. And he said to the, you know, the adult Mozart, you know, what do I do? And, and Mozart said, why don't you start with some minuets or something? I'm not a music person, so, I mean, I love music, but I'm not that person that can discuss these, like, you know, terms and stuff. Anyway, I think he said minuets. And, and, and then the, the guy said, well, you didn't start with minuets. And he said, I also didn't ask anybody how to do it. I love that because Mozart just had it in him. He just had it in him and, and you know, inspired and, and obviously your natural gifts and everything. So our authentic purpose, which brings out, actually as a good example, the other thing is the ins inspiration is very much related to our calling and what we were, what we're truly meant to do because we are all unique, not to be cliche, but we're surrounded by them. Snowflakes, you know, it's just so cool to even think of that analogy for me because I love winter so much. But to, to also want somebody else's purpose doesn't work. To be inspired in the ways other people are inspired doesn't work because it all has to be, it has to be your own unique inner voice speaking to you to be able to do it. It's just how it works. Remember, can't be forced, can't be planned. It just doesn't happen like that. You got to create the inspiration vacuum so it just flows. And then when it flows, my first book wrote itself. So did my second and third, really. Mostly the first one, I think, because it was my first one. Like a faucet I couldn't shut off. I don't feel like, similar to Wayne Dwyer, even though uh, not comparing greatness of work, just comparing the process, I get when he says it. You just can't even shut it off. It just was like, it's like needling me from the inside out. And it just, it just really just uh, flowed. So it also comes back to attention and intention, which, which look at little Giovanni, huh? Puppies. There he is. He's helped me out today. Attention and intention pretty much sum up life. What we attenuate to is what will be successful. My husband's been saying that forever, different contexts, but, well, similar contexts, I guess. But whether it's, you know, you want to be a pro basketball player, whether you want to be an artist, whether you want to travel the world, whether it's your relationships, it's whatever, whatever. Being top dog as a CEO, whatever you put first is what's going to make it. And the thing is, if you want to be not just happy, but joyful, full of joy, we really want to, to listen to these, to these whispers to guide us to what we're kind of meant to do because that therein lies the passion. And, you know, uh, especially as a fast minder, those with the ADHD can't not do this. Like I literally couldn't do my, I wouldn't last it anywhere if I didn't absolutely, if it didn't fill me up and over the top. And it doesn't mean that there aren't times in life when you have to do that. I told you about my bartending job, which I brought joy to it, blah, 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 blah. But the whole point is, if you truthfully want to find your purpose and stay on it, you got to create some quiet. Even if you live in Manhattan on like the 70th floor, find a way to be silent and really, really listen to, really, really listen to those, to the inner, you know, your inner voice as far as what you're, what you 
um, are inspired to do because that is the only way it's going to happen. Attention and intention. And then it's, here's how it works. Oprah says this too, actually. But I'm just telling you because I felt it. There's no better feeling in the world than when your authentic self is, is just making it happen. When your personality is aligned with you know, this, this internal voice is this divine voice, this divine connection, what we're supposed to be doing. When those two things line up, personality and divine connection, what we're supposed to be doing, the, oh my God, there's just no feeling like it. It's, it. it's power in a good way. It's just power. And that leads to flow, which is the work of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, right? Where when you're in that, doing your thing, like I'm flying around the classroom teaching, doing all my well-being stuff, um, engage with people after TED Talks. So part of the fun of the TED Talks with, with, when I did the two of them was the after part when people come up to you and just talk and share their personal stories. I was so charged up, um, just like with that recent Boston thing I did too. I feel like I could have run laps around D.C. Oh my gosh, it's just so incredibly rewarding. So when you're really in flow, which inspiration leads to, you there's no one else you'd rather be in that moment you have no clue what time it is because the clock's just like going in circles. You, have, you could have, like four hours could have passed by, you don't even know. Kind of like if you're playing in a band in your garage and that's your thing. You open the door and it's dark. You're like, whoa, where'd that time go? This is how it all works and comes together. And the wild part about it is sometimes people kill themselves putting all this effort, all this you know, effort into finding their purpose. And it's really, it's really the opposite. You, and I'm not a fan of lazy. This is not lazy. It's 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 creating a vacuum it's really it's kind of like if you're putting an effort to be yourself you're not being yourself you know what i'm saying like you just just be when you open the door for inspiration to like the catcher's mitt thing it doesn't take effort the only effort is in stepping out of the current to to hear the voice that's it the other than that it shouldn't take a lot of effort it shouldn't take any effort just kind of sit back and and then listen and one thing leads to the other and when you know when you start you'll know you're you're really on your authentic very inspired path when you start to hear uh hear your inner voice and and um the divine connection coming through other people i cannot tell you how many times i've had this happen where i'm kind of looking for a video idea i'm looking for whatever change is going on in my life and like one of my good friends will just spit something out and i'll stand there going oh my god you just said exactly what just happened actually you just said exactly what i needed to hear or with all this youtubing stuff i'm doing that just happened like through people and they just say stuff because inspiration comes from everywhere in my classroom in my minecraft classroom i i mean i'll say things from you know use use things said by mother Teresa, maya angelo will smith jim carrey tons of randos who aren't quote unquote famous because the inspiration is just all over the place it's just crazy once you're open to it you, you can't shut it off and the universe will get out of your way like you just create a here you go you're off and running on a path just like that that's how it works okay that's it this is kimberly quinn signing off from the gorgeous deep woods in northern vermont have a mindful very inspired day